actual experience exceeds all expectations. It is something that's hard to put to words. All these things that may seem big and impossible are not. It gives people that type of energy, that type of power. Hi, everyone. Welcome back to Wine and Chill. I'm Stephanie, your friendly neighborhood lawyer. Well, if you're new here, not your lawyer, which brings me quickly to our disclaimer. By watching this video, you understand and acknowledge that this video solely for entertainment purposes only. And today I have my friend Grace here with me as we do our first throwback lawsuit, throwback entertainment lawsuit, throwback foolery, throwback shenanigans. So this is Grace from Grace Report. Hi, thanks so much for having me on, Steph. I'm so excited that we're doing this and that this is our first one. I have to admit, when I saw this advertisement for the first time, I went online to look at how much the tickets cost. <laughs> Did you? It's yeah. good advertising. Because sometimes lawsuits can be very depressing, um, but this is just pure comedy. So if you are not familiar with what that advertisement was, that is the original Fire Festival advertisement, which I am surprised is still up, as in the Fire Festival YouTube channel is still up six <laughs> years later. They're very shameless. <laughs> Remember, like they, that guy owes $26 million. Let him get his AdSense money. How, do you know how many views that's at? Because it's oh, got a lot of views. Actually, that's a great question. It is at <laughs> 6,181,125 views as of today. So that's almost $50,000. That's wild. That is really wild. Yeah. Actually, it's from January 12, 2017. So not six years. Y'all know my math is not uh, the greatest. So today mm -hmm. we are going to talk about the Fire Festival documentary about Billy McFarland, who was the creator and the fall man for Fire Festival. And we're going to talk a little bit how Ja Rule apparently has still claimed that he has been bamboozled and has avoided any lawsuit or any jail time for this entire foolishness. This is Billy McFarland and Ja Rule. The most unlikely pair of um, an alleged scammer and a convicted scammer. I know. I was like, of all the rap rappers who were on and popping like five years ago, you went for Ja Rule? Really? <laughs> it, I have so many questions as to this whole story. So for those of you that aren't familiar, you should watch the Fire Festival documentary on Netflix. The one on Hulu is actually very depressing and sad, which we'll talk about at the end. The one on Netflix is pure comedy. It sold 8,000 tickets to this Fire Festival. Um, it was supposed to be an island extravaganza. Rich customers paid between $1,000 and $12,000. For context, this festival had never been thrown before. So all that footage and that advertisement, they created the footage, they flew the models in, um, Kendall Jenner is in there, Chanel Iman is in there. A lot of big names were in there and no one ever said it was an advertisement, which proceeded to be the problem because gullible rich children believed. Wait, what do you mean no one ever said it was supposed to be an advertisement? No one ever said it was an ad. So when they did the rollout, they did a rollout on Instagram. Um, and it was, I think, like a gr uh, orange circle or something. So it was like the advertisement, this orange circle. And it was, join me at Fire Festival, et cetera. So when, um, as we were going to go through the lawsuits a little bit later, when they proceeded to get sued, the FTC went after Kendall Jenner, went after the other models and Instagrammers and said, hey, you're supposed to say it's an advertisement. And their defense was all, well, obviously it's an advertisement. It's not like we're all just like hanging out on the beach in our bikini all day. <laughs> now I get it. Yeah. <laughs> you always have to disclose influencers. Always, always, always. Let's get into a little bit about um, the festival itself. And mm -hmm. we saw what was promised at Pablo Escobar's former island, allegedly. And this is what they received. <laughs> a slight step down from what I saw in the video. <laughs> it's it's still it's still not giving what it's supposed to give. Like this is a cheese sandwich, I guess. Mm -hmm. No it's sauce, like, nothing. It's just it's a mess. It's so dry and gross. They it's said you were going to get the best accommodations and best food and best of everything, and this is definitely a hurricane shelter. It really is. I. Do you remember where this food came from? It didn't come from that nice Bahamian lady, did it? Like it was no, just some random. She, she gave them actual food, which those children need to pay her back trifling. Yeah. But I don't even know where they got. I think the fire festival gave them the little cheese sandwiches. A mess. A they could have mess. at least like cut them and pretended it was charcuterie. 
I just remember when the um, when the documentary came out, everybody just like being in shock at all the people tweeting like, I'm starving. I'm over here in Fire Festival. And people, everyone, no one felt bad. They were like, you went down there to the Bahamas to a festival that has never existed. And you thought that this made sense. <laughs> well, I can't like down on them because again, I went on the website. I was like, well, how much are these tickets? Like $100, $200? Maybe I could scrape some coinage together and go. <laughs> but then when it came out that it was so expensive, I think a lot of the reason why people didn't care was because people were spending like crazy money, like thousands to go there. People are like, poor little rich kids. Ask your parents to send over a helicopter. You'll be fine, right? <laughs> and speaking of, why didn't anybody get like a personal helicopter, right? Because they're rich kids. They're spending crazy money here. It was very much giving like rently culture, like, oh, mm. rich adjacent, like I'm going to do foolishness and stump for the grab. And it, you know, did it end well? Never ends well. So the most memorable person, I think, from the entire documentary was this loyal employee named Andy. Mm -hmm. Andy was basically in charge of all of operations, in charge of making sure everything went well. I do not know where scammer Billy McFarland, which we're going to get into Billy McFarland. He's a convicted scammer at this point from Fire Festival, where he found Andy and his lovely soul of gold. But Andy, to be honest, on top of the crimes that Billy was charged with, should also be charged with, you know, hostile work environment, uh, sexual harassment. And we're going to play the clip so you can see why, just in case you're not familiar. Taylor trucks filled with Evian water. But I had left the week before for two days to go to meetings. It was in a Bermuda specific America's call out Cup. on Evian. And when I came back, I missed the big meeting <laughs> with Customs. And of course, Customs had said to Billy and the gang, you need to pay us $175,000 in cash today for us to release the water. I went down. Well, Billy called me. I'm going to speak completely. Um, you know, this won't go that far, I'm sure. But Billy <laughs> called and said, Andy, we need you to take one big thing for the team. And I said, Oh my gosh, I've been taking something for the team every day. He said, well, you're our wonderful gay leader and we need you to go down. Will Social you discrimination? suck to fix this water problem? I and I said, Billy, what? He said, Andy, if you will go down and suck Cunningham, who's the head of customs, and get him to clear all of the containers with water, you will save this festival. And I literally drove home, took a shower, I, I, I drank some mouthwash. I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm really, and I got into my car to drive across the island to take one for the team. Take one for the team. For the team, that's what that man said. Um, <laughs> he really should have sued, not that Billy McFarlane has any money, but he should have sued Billy McFarlane for sexual discrimination, for harassment, mm -hmm. for intentional infliction of emotional distress, for all of the things. And you know what makes it even worse is that that man is a family friend. That's how Billy found that guy. He's a family friend through the dad, I think it is. <laughs> the boys ain't your boys. No, no. The way I would have been like, excuse me, what? <laughs> right. So Andy pointed out a good point that the festival had issues to begin with. Before they got to the cheese sandwiches, before they got to the hurricane tents, the festival never actually was executed. Billy raised $26 million for a festival that had no actual soundstage, had no actual restaurants dedicated to it. It was supposed to no cabanas as they sold people $10,000 cabana packages. How? I swear. You know, I think this kind of goes to the discussion that we always often have about how easy it is for like male founders, especially white male founders, to raise money based on like feeble ideas, weak ideas, or ideas that like, you know, are not, they're not even going to be able to execute or whatever. Whereas women yeah. and especially women of color go and try to raise money for great ideas and they don't, ra they don't successfully raise money. Like it's crazy. Mm -hmm. This is a People really good illustration. Money. Of it. People will ask for like proof of concept for this and yeah. that. This man has never run a festival, yet investors gave him $26 million. And he was what at the time? Because right now, I think he was born in 91. So I think he's like 29 years old or something. Um, yeah. Oh, yeah. So, or turning 30. Yeah. Right. So, so he's 25. This is 2017. This is four years ago. Yeah. How? How did he even meet Ja Rule? Back to the original question. 
Oh, from the credit card thing. Remember when he was running his first oh, yes. little shady thing? Ja Rule was one of the, I don't know if he's an investor or if um, it was one of the concerts or something that he was providing as a benefit to his members. That's true. He he tried a previous scam before this where he ran an exclusive <laughs> credit card um, club. Yeah. Credit card club, essentially, that if you had his fancy card, you could get into special events around New York City. I remember mm. that, which didn't end well. And many of the credit card club members sued him. Right. It seemed like such a cool concept, right? Like if it was run mm -hmm. efficiently and legally. Uh, but of course it wasn't. <laughs> it was it, the concept I feel like was like Soho House, but with credit cards. Yes, that's it. Mm -hmm. That's exactly yeah. it. I feel like it's perfect for young professionals, right? Like when you're a young, mm -hmm. upwardly mobile professional, you want to be like in these clubs and stuff like that. You're like, yeah, I want to be around people who are like in a similar place in their lives than I am. It's great for networking professionally, personally, all of that. So like, I loved the concept. I really did. When I heard about it, I was like, damn, this guy, he is intelligent. The problem is that he just doesn't do things the right way, but he's intelligent. He's got great ideas. I th yeah, I think he figured out like what people wanted and would mm -hmm. seem from the credit card club to fire festival, people want to portray a certain level of lavishness, whether or not they are actually living lavish. Mm -hmm. And he realized that and he himself was doing that. That's exactly. probably how he figured that out. You know what, honestly, Steph, I think that he's going to like have it made when he comes out of prison. I think that he might be able to do something else like that. He's going to yeah. get some book deals. He's going to get some shows. Like people are very like curious about him, which again, yeah. problematic white men fail up. Always. <laughs> this man is in prison. Is in prison mm -hmm. making podcasts, which we'll talk about at the end. Ja Rule was... I would say Billy McFarland's, he would not categorize it this way, right-hand man. He mm -hmm. was really the face of Fire Festival. He was supposed to be the headliner. Blink-182 was also booked. It was very random. I was like, these are very random people. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're named like in one of the lawsuits we're going to look at. So the whole time, um, as Ja Rule lent his face to the Fire mm -hmm. Festival, when everything finally came out, they had actual employees, like regular people who where basically they had the fire festival and then they had a fire festival app. They had a fire app. So they yeah. had tech employees and these tech employees were like, okay, well, I don't deal with the festival. Like, I don't even know what that is. They were building out this app and the app was supposed to help musicians have help musicians have like more control of their music. Oh. So like the app actually had a really good concept. So he hired all these people and they had no idea that the fraudulence was going on. So at one point when they realized it was happening, they confronted Ja Rule, which mm -hmm. he refused to acknowledge that it was a scam. So we're going to play that clip here. Come on, guys. There's a lot of smart people on this phone call, man. Let's think of how to dig ourselves out of this shit, man. We didn't kill anybody. Nobody got hurt. Why is that the threshold? We'll I mean, Grant, nobody died, but we did flat out lie to the public about what we we're giving them. I mean, that's fraud. Like, <laughs> no, and that's not okay. Like, no, as a company no, operates, that's not fraud. That's not fraud. <laughs> that's not fraud. That is, uh, I would call that a uh, false advertising, sir. <laughs> fraud. <laughs> He's so fraud. Sir, it's very much giving fraud. But he was very and, adamant, like, no, no, me, I didn't commit fraud. I didn't commit fraud. <laughs> it's so weird that he'll cop to false advertising. Why would you even want to cop to false advertising so proudly anyway? <laughs> exactly. To which he then, in his famous tweet that mm -hmm. everyone has seen at this point, I too was hustled, scammed, bamboozled, hoodwinked, led astray. He blamed all of it on Billy McFarlane, which Billy McFarlane obviously was the brains. However, I have questions because to me, the only people that have been scammed, bamboozled, hoodwinked and led astray are the employees. And mm -hmm. then were the people of the Bahamas of Exuma Island that were like, what are all these random entitled children doing on my island asking for free food? <laughs> yeah. Other than then, that, like, I'm uh -huh. very concerned as to why Ja Rule thinks that he has been bamboozled. I thought it was your idea. Well, right. Like, you are on tape. It hits different right after you listen to him on tape talking about, well, listen, we lied. You know, I wouldn't call it fraud, but we false advertised. You were not hoodwinked, bamboozled, or led us straight if you can cop to the fact that you lied. <laughs> but I, my lies are not fraudulent lies, though. They're friendly lies. <laughs> Oh, I'm still surprised why people didn't sue him. 
I think well, there were Ja lawsuits that didn't like go anywhere. How much money does he have, Ja Rule? Does he have money? Can he afford? Like, will you get anything if you sue him? Girl, that's questions that need answers, Ja. I'll drink to that. <laughs> drink to that. And he's not the only one. There are so many celebrities, former yeah. celebrities and current celebrities that have admitted that they have no money. That they have actually been bamboozled, hoodwinked, signed these contracts to where they get nothing from. They don't own their masters. Snoop Dogg just said the other day that for years he made no money on his music. Meek Mill came out and said he received no money from his record label. Many artists do get bamboozled and hoodwinked. And mm -hmm. so I definitely empathize in that manner. But it doesn't mean go around hoodwinking other people. Exactly. Trying to recoup your money from your like failed 360 deals or whatever. No, it's not fair. It's not fair. <laughs> and then it, because a part of it is still like keep up like this image of lifestyle. And I'm like, there's no way you can afford this. So let's get into who actually finally did the time for the crime. <laughs> Look, it that was. <laughs> <laughs> no, I love an old lady pun. It was um, Billy McFarlane. So Billy McFarlane was the co-founder and owner of Fire Festival. LLC, Fire Festival Inc. And he is now serving six years for fraud, for wire fraud specifically, in federal prison. However, again, Billy McFarlane scammed $26 million. He does not have $26 million to pay back. What the courts then did, they liquidated um, the Fire Festival company. And then they went after to when Fire Festival went into bankruptcy, they went after all of the artists, the vendors, the performers to get the money back. So they went after Blink-182 and said, hey, you got a 200 something thousand dollar check. You didn't perform. Give me this money back so I can give it back to the concert goers. So Blink-182 actually gave some of their money back. But unsurprisingly, uh, Miss Kendall Jenner is in the process of letting go of the money she received for this advertising, which is, I think, very interesting. So this is from the bankruptcy court. So the bankruptcy court then filed a motion against her specifically and said, I, let's see how much money. Um, by instant complaint, the trustee seeks the avoidance of $275,000 paid to Jenner for just making the following single post to her Instagram account promoting the festival. One post, she got $275,000. And she won't pay it back. It's like, sis, it's not like you busted your butt to make that 275. Post. You'll make it back again. And she probably makes a lot more than that now because this was four years ago, is right? Years ago? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And by the way, this gif is killing me. That, oh, but <laughs> <laughs> that you're welcome. controversy. You're welcome. Listen, here's your Pepsi. <laughs> but you have to you know, prod adjacent. Like, girl, you, you need a better team sometimes. Chris, Chris always allows Kendall to do masses. Like, why? Why did you book either of these things, Chris? Why? <laughs> Maybe she's a least favorite. <laughs> She'd never do Kim like this. <laughs> she would never do Kimmy like this mess. But yes, so Jenner did not indicate to the public. So this is when um, the FTC jumped in and said, "Hey, all of you Instagrammers, you cannot be going around, you know, bamboozling the public into thinking this real." Of course, a regular, regular person would know, like, "Hey, this is an ad," but you know, that's fine. That's fine. Mm -hmm. Further, Jenner's reference to her good music family as headliners at the festival intentionally led certain members of the public and ticket purchasers to believe that Jenner's brother-in-law, famous musician and good music rep record label founder Kanye West may be or would be performing at the festival. I didn't even know Kanye had gotten dragged into this. Me neither. This is news to me. <laughs> In fact, Mr. West was never going to perform at the festival. This conduct demonstrates a clear lack of good faith on Jenner's part. So, yes. So basically, the trustee asserts that the transfers are avoidable and actual fraudulent transfers. So they said they should have never even paid her as yeah. they were made in continuation of McFarland's fraud, which involved duping investors, creditors and the public into investing in Fire Festival and purchasing tickets to the doomed festival. Mm -hmm. They reached a settlement with oh, about 200 of the concert goers. Remember, there was 8,000 people bought tickets. Well, 200 of them were in a class action they sued, and they yeah. reached a settlement of $2 million. So they were supposed to get seven grand each, these 200 That's people, it. which is significantly less than what they paid. Yeah. Which is interesting. But also, to get the seven grand each, it doesn't matter. You could sue anybody. But if you sue somebody who doesn't have any money, you are just wasting filing fees and paperwork and attorney's yeah. fees. Your attorney will still collect their check. 
So now the trustees are trying to get the money. So they're going after Kendall Jenner. They're going after the influencers being like, okay, like we need to pay out the settlement. Um, but the BBC reported that they only have collected now the trustees about a million dollars. So all of those concert goers, the festival goers are only going to get around $300 each. But what about their attorney's fee? So they did all of this for nothing, basically. Well, the, attorney, the attorney fee all automatically comes out. So when you sign these contingency fees with the attorneys, oh. they usually take around 30 per, to 40%. So it's usually mm -hmm. like 33% is the norm. So say you win a million dollars, the attorney's like, okay, great, lovely. You paid me nothing up front. I'm going to take out my 330 grand. And then here's your 700 and y'all know math is not my ministry. Whatever that amount is, that's what 670. Here's your $670,000 and yeah. here you go, go pay your taxes, do whatever. So in this, if they collected a million dollars, the attorney took out their 330. Well, that's sad. I feel bad. They're getting nothing. They're getting nothing. Yeah. You're better than me to feel bad for them. I feel a little bad because it's wrong. But then yeah. I watch that documentary and I'm like, y'all kids was acting a muck, running a muck. <laughs> they are running a muck. People that run a muck in the Caribbean, I have particular disdain for. Oh, <laughs> I, I have particular I see, disdain. I see them as like dumb, innocent, like young kids who thought they were going to get something. You know what I mean? And they didn't ultimately end up getting it. It's been a while. You know, that's what makes me wonder too on the influencer side. Is it not easier to just give back the money than to fight these fees? Because if you've been paying your attorney's fees, especially like a general level attorney over mm -hmm. four years, you've paid more than the money that they just want back from something that was so basic to you, right? Like yeah. on Instagram or whatever. I personally think it would have been smarter for them to just pay back. That's a good, yeah, that's a good point. I think most of them should have just paid it back, particularly mm -hmm. if you have it. But then one point that I think is kind of interesting, I think they're trying to avoid being in trouble with the FTC. Because they did something wrong. They yeah. made all these posts and didn't say like, hey, this is an ad or like, hey, I got paid for this, etc. Mm -hmm. So I think like this is like part of like their bargain with the FTC for the FTC not to go after them. So like, the okay, as long as you have pending litigation, we're not going to go after you. But like if you say that, of course, you cop a plea to this and you spend the money, then like we're going to go after you. I think I think it's like a little bit more complicated because technically they're also a yeah. wrong party. And the FTC like did issue certain fines, but I don't mm -hmm. think they were any like large amounts. Oh, okay, that's interesting then. Okay, now I get it. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. I think this, if I remember correctly, 2017, this is around the time that all of a sudden you started seeing like all the inst the IG girls being like, hashtag ad, hashtag this after their stuff. Because mm -hmm. then the FTC started cracking down and was like, we will go after all of you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like hashtag skinny tea, flat tummy tea, hashtag ad, like whatever nonsense they used to do. So the one of the few victims outside of Andy, because God bless Andy, poor Andy, <laughs> is Mary Ann Roll. And Mary Ann Roll is a Bahamian woman who lived on Exuma and owns a restaurant. And it came out during the Netflix documentary, but then Hulu specifically did a documentary, which included her story and focused more on the negative impact that this entire scam had on the Bahamas. Mary Ann Roll and all of her good spirit self decided when all of those rich, hungry children showed up and were expecting food that yes, they did pay for, they did not pay for from her. They did not buy from her restaurant. She fed them anyway. They popped up at her restaurant and she felt bad for them. So she gave away thousands, tens of thousands of dollars of food to these kids. Didn't none of these dutty children pay her, which <laughs> bothered me to my spirit and still <laughs> bothers me. They just took her food and ran with it. And then eventually a GoFundMe was set up for her because at that point she herself was then in um, financial struggle, like due to helping out the fire Festival um, attendees. Mm -hmm. So Ja Rule then made this tweet because... I think Ja Rule's PR team is actually very smart. I highly doubt like he did all this by himself. But to distance himself further, he said Hulu paid Billy. That money should have went to the Bahamian people. Netflix paid Jerry, the same guys that did the promo for the festival. So to Ja Rule's point was these documentaries, A, weren't free. Billy signed off on them. He got a check. He sat in prison and got his little check. Mm -hmm. um, Jerry is from the famous Instagram account called Fuck Jerry. Are you familiar? It's like a meme yeah. account, but they actually are a marketing agency, which They're is interesting. Weird. But that's who did the Netflix documentary. So oh. they took all of the memes from, from Twitter and everything, and they put them on their meme account, and they got paid for the Netflix documentary. 
does Ja Rule not get paid anything? Is that what he wants? That, I feel like that's what he's trying to insinuate. Like, sir, go sit in the corner before someone alerts that you too may have not been bamboozled. Exactly. I think Ja Rule was very prom I only watched the Netflix doc, but he was very prominent in the Netflix documentary. Um, and he had a big part in the fire company in general. So I do exactly. believe that he was cut a check and he's trying to act like he wasn't, which to me is insulting. Don't throw everyone under the bus, you know, when you belong there alongside them. No, exactly. He could have gave his check. To mm -hmm. Where is that? Yeah. He could have and should have gave Marianne his check. There's no way he was not paid anything, you know? So I think if he was really, you know, if he really genuinely cared about the Bahamian people, not just her, but the people who are building everything, the stages and stuff, yep. he never paid to. Yes, he, that's true. He could have done something about it. You know, even if it's yeah. like a benefit concert or something, like his music, to me, I loved his hits. I still love past. his old music. It's true. Him Himself is a... I don't know what's happening, but his old music is good. Exactly. Like he could have done a little virtual concert or something to raise that money because this did tug at a lot of people's heartstrings, you know, so he could have done that and he chose not to. So he's trash That's, too. That's, tell them. <laughs> tell them, Grace. Could drink to them. Let's drink to that, girl. <laughs> oh, I love your wine glass. So pretty. Thank you. Nice. I don't know where it's from. It was here when I moved in. <laughs> so I figured we would end with the fact that Billy McFarlane has nothing but caucasity and audacity all day. <laughs> and I have never seen anybody like this man. So while he is serving his six-year prison sentence, Billy McFarlane has a podcast and was caught um, recording for his podcast in prison to which he was sent to solitary confinement. Freaking what? How many episodes did he get out before he was sent into co uh, solitary confinement, by the way? Ooh, Do you know? Is, this, is a good, this is a good question. Let me look it up. <laughs> it's called Dumpster anything. Fire, by the way. <laughs> Ironic. So apt, right? <laughs> like, what is happening? It is called Dumpster Fire, and that's F-Y-R-E. <laughs> for all of you and there are currently on dumpster fire they have seven episodes of dumpster fire my god okay yep. so seven episodes and they're all about okay so 30 minutes 47 minutes one minute 18 so the one minute one is the last one that he had is that the one that he had just before he got sent into the shoe <laughs> I, <don't know. laughs> I, need to laugh. I gotta go guys bye <laughs> I didn't laugh. Uh -uh. I love these comments. Somebody gave it two stars, labeled the comment fraud. Actually, let me share this. <laughs> oh my God. So this is Billy McFarlane's podcast, Dumpster Fire. Uh, the, two, the customer reviews are low and that's because he is an awful person. Um, this is hilarious. <laughs> I am so obsessed right if now. If anything, the man is a great marketer. Is a, is. Some, so these comments, I'm dumb. I'm dumb with these reviews. These, the title should be Liar, Liar, Pants on Fire. <laughs> <laughs> People are childish. Billy is a sociopath. He will reoffend given the chance. Yes, he, he is. He's going to get out of jail and then mm -hmm. do something else. That is definitely what we're about to watch. This one is great. Um, they just labeled their comment fraud. I'm going to make it big so y'all can see. After listening to the first episode, it appears that he's created this podcast to clear his name. Yes, it's great that he's giving back the money he's making to the people who are affected by his awful actions. But every other sentence, his, his just him saying how sorry he is. Getting the feeling that he created this podcast to help his image, not to share the real story behind Firefest. Is he really giving people this money? I want confirmation. I want receipt. I'm, I'm going to need an audit. I'm going to need an audit. Yes. I don't know I if I can imagine. I don't know. He, he seems like the type to have money in like offshore accounts <laughs> instead of just like giving it back to the people. It's somewhere else. It's in the Cayman Islands. <laughs> Euro. It's in every island but the Bahamas. Clearly. Exactly. Oh, so tragically true. Yes. Um, that's a mess. <laughs> well, Grace, I appreciate you for helping me kick off our first throwback. If y'all have any um, throwbacks that you want to see, let me know. And we'll have, go visit Grace at Grace Reports. We will have Grace come on the channel again. Um, Grace does anything reality TV related. So if you have any reality TV lawsuits you want to see, let me know. And then Grace and I will do them together.
That'd be so fun. Thanks so much, Steph. It's been so fun. I always love collabing with you. (laughs) Thank you. Thank you for coming on the channel. All right, everyone. If there is a throwback lawsuit you want to see, let me know in the comments. So far, we have The Matrix. I haven't done them yet. I mean, on my list. Matrix, Enron, Watergate. So whatever you want to see, we can cover it. I'll catch you on the next video.